My name is Faith Shaher Hayat, and I was born in northern China in 1998. I was left as a baby at the entrance of a coal mine, or at least that is the story I have been told. Why? I'm not sure, but there could have been several reasons. At the time I was born, China had one child only policy. Or because I was born with a cleft palate, and therefore not acceptable, or my parents did not know how to feed me, I will probably never have an answer. What I do know is the family that found me brought me to their home and took care of me like I was their own child. We lived in a one-room apartment. It was my parents, my two foster brothers, and me. My foster mom took care of the home, and my foster dad and older foster brother worked many hours and were often gone for many days. In 2005, we were several years into a very messy, complicated, long, drawn-out process of international adoption. One day, we received a plea from our agency to consider a little girl who was in jeopardy of aging out of the orphanage. She needed cleft palate surgery and was older than both our two girls. We prayerfully said yes, and it changed our family's path forever. It would be another two years before we could bring her home to the U.S. Two years of almost no information and nothing to do other than pray for her protection. When I was older, I moved to the orphanage. I shared a bed with two other girls. It was hard living at the orphanage. It was cold in the winter and hot in the summer. I was very hungry all the time. We did many chores, and there were lots of fighting. My friend Leah said I was the toughest kid there, and if anyone wanted more food or needed protection, they would always come to me. Even though there were so many kids at the orphanage, I felt very alone, and I missed my foster family. One day, without much warning, I felt I left the orphanage and traveled with other children to a hotel where parents were waiting to meet their children. I was so scared. Once it was over, I was left alone with my new mom. No one seemed to understand what I was saying. Not my new mom, who spoke only English, and not the Chinese guy, who could not understand me. It was frustrating. I really did not understand what was happening to me. In 2007, we brought her home and gave her the name Faith. The first few years were so rough. She seesawed between being emotionally shut down. Or raging, violent tantrums, sometimes both within the same five minutes. There were major motor skill delays, speech delays, cognitive development struggles, and surgeries that needed to take place to help her speech, breathing, and eating. The days were filled with therapists, some who, who gave us dark, scary statistics, offered no hope and no encouragement, and others, specialists and teachers, who said there was nothing wrong. And as parents, we were overreacting, and we should just work harder at helping Faith learn English. When we got to the U.S., I was so shocked how everything was so different from where I had grown up. What we ate, how people act, how people dressed, how they sat—all the things that America has that I was never allowed to touch or use in China, like TVs, books, bicycles. Remotes, cell phones, closet full of clothes—it was all overwhelming. The surgery repaired the hole in my mouth, but learning to speak English and learning to speak clearly was very difficult. No amount of reading and seminars and expert advice prepared us enough to parent a child with this type of trauma. It was a constant reminder of how inadequate. We love others. We had to adjust how we parented. It was exhausting and isolating, and we even lost friends who didn't understand how our family was changing. I would ask myself, "Am I being patient and merciful like Jesus would? Is my love for her really unconditional?" And I prayed a lot. Building relationships with strangers who were now my family was the hardest of all. When we went to places, people would talk to me, 
and asked a lot of questions and tell me how lucky I was to be adopted. I did not feel lucky. I could not follow what they were saying, so I would just smile and say yes all the time. I pretended everything was okay, but everything was hard. At home, I could not hide any of those feelings. I was different from my sisters, even though they were close in age. I could not act the, the same way they did or do the same things they could do. I was a- so angry, I did not understand why I left my foster family or the orphanage, and I did not trust that my f- new family was permanent. I was always afraid I would be- do something wrong and they would make me leave too. When my brothers were adopted, things started to get better. I realized how much I loved being with younger kids and helping them. In China, I don't remember people worshiping anything and I had never heard of Jesus. Once I was adopted, I spent a lot of time in church and in Awana. I learned reusing the Bible and memorizing verses. My favorite time of the week was Awana and I had a great leader, Ida. Wagner. Mrs. Wagner was very patient, helping me with Bible verses and explaining it to me. In my room at home, my mom let me write Bible verses with a sharpie all over the walls and ceilings of my bedroom and would go to sleep reading them. It took a long time to understand who God is that Jesus sacrificed for me. When I was a sophomore in high school, I finally know who Christ is and what He did for me and I accepted Jesus as my savior. Being an orphan is unfair. Having a handicap and not being able to communicate is frustrating. People would make fun of how I would talk and it was hurtful. Being taken away from the only family I know and sent to an orphanage is cruel and leaving my home was hard. But I realized now that God was with me all along and he had a great plan for my life. I was never really alone. He was always with me and he chose me to be part of his family. He had a plan for my, for my life that brought me into a relationship with Jesus. Today I am in awe of what God has done. I watch my grown daughter serve others wherever she is needed. She is kind hearted and has a very gentle spirit. God has been so faithful. He didn't leave her as an orphan. He pursued her and showed her his perfect love, and she blossomed. It has been a lot of years since I left China and was adopted to the higher family. I had been able to graduate high school and get to work with children every day and talk to them about Jesus. I'm thankful for my parents to add me to their family. But mostly, I'm thankful that God has adopted me into his family and I get to spend eternity as a child of God.